everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share another scrapbooking process video with you. Now, this is the second project that I am sharing this month for Kidaholic Kits, as I am guest designing for them this month using the November scrapbook kit, and I am also using the mixed media add-on kit. So if you saw my previous video, you may remember the subject that I scrapped was some photos of one of my sons dressed up as a character from a story that he wrote. So today I decided that I better scrap one for the other twin. So I am actually scrapping some photos of my other son dressed up as the character that he created for his Dr. Seuss style story that we wrote during homeschooling. So he actually created a story called Frank the Zombie. So I am going to scrap some photos of him dressed up as the zombie that we did for our little mini photo shoot. So I just started my page with some white cardstock and I chose a few papers that I thought would coordinate well with the photos. So the papers that I am working with was the beautiful wood grain from Crepe Paper from the Marigold Collection. I'm also working with uh, one of the Heidi Swap old school papers, which is the one that's got the tiger head on it. Although you can see I can just used I just used a couple of like thin strips of the black from the side of that paper. And I'm also going to use the uh, typed text print from the Jen Hadfield, the Avenue collection. So I am starting off with a fairly basic design for this. I could not bear to use the entire sheet of that wood grain print all in one go. So I actually cut down a strip that measured, it must have been about seven and a half, eight inches, something like that, just to run vertically down my page. And then, as I said, I used a couple of strips of that black paper from that Heidi Swap paper just to run either side of it and just to give it a bit of definition. So I'm actually working with three photos on this page. So I've got a three by four and then I've got two smaller ones as well. And just as I had done with my other page, the story is a large feature of this page. So again, I was going to use one of those Pink Fresh Studio um, pockets and the little tag that goes inside it. And I wanted to make sure that, that was a prominent feature on my page. So I had already printed out my journaling when I did the previous page of my other son. I printed out basically the same journaling for him. I just changed a few of the words to obviously make it more personalized for him. And just as I had done with my other son, I also uploaded a video of him reading his story to my YouTube channel, which I set as private. And then I created a QR code for the video, which I've just put on the back of the journal tag. So there I've got the text print paper from Jen Hadfield. Now, given that this was about a story that he'd written, that was the reason that I chose this text print paper. And I decided to extend that theme even further and dusted off one of my old Fiskars punches. And it's actually just a notebook style punch. So I just punched down the side of that and I just used my finger just to sort of ruffle the the little tabs up a bit just to give it a bit of texture and the other thing I didn't mention was when I put the wood grain and the black strips down I actually just used an old Heidi Swap distresser just to distress along the edges of it and just create a little bit of you know subtle texture because I didn't want the page to look too flat. So here in the layout, you can see I'm actually trying to work out where all of my bits are going to go. As I said, I need that pocket and tag to be a large feature on the page because it was all about the story. And then I'm just figuring out where I'm going to place my photos around it. So I, I don't always like having things straight on the page. I like things to be a little bit asymmetrical and I just think it creates a bit more interest for the eye. So what I did was I... I offset the two smaller photos on an angle and then the larger photo I have popped up on a bit of cardboard just to bring it up from the page. So I've got all of my main elements in place by this stage. I've got my pattern papers in place. I've got my journaling pocket in place. I've got my photos in place. And now I'm actually going to use one of the stencils from the Vicky Booten Storyteller stencils that are in the mixed media kit this month. And I just chose this one that had the, like, their marks. They're, like, just these rows of lines. 
And what I did was I actually used some washi tape just to mask off a single row of those little lines. And I'm just going to use some black stays on ink and a sponge dauber and just going to sponge through along the bottom edge of my page. And then I'm actually going to repeat the same process along the top edge of the page. Um, oh, I had no rhyme or reason as to why I chose to do this, but I just thought it would just close off the top and the bottom of the page quite nicely because those black lines down the side were quite sort of solid and I didn't want the eye being pulled too vertically so I wanted to put some sort of strong horizontal elements in there as well and I just thought it would help break up the um, the wood grain a bit and also pull in that black a little bit more I didn't want those those two black lines those vertical black lines to be the only black on the page so once I'd done, yes, and you can see my stencil there is now stained. If you know anything about me, you know I'm not the greatest cleaner of stencils or stamps or anything else. I don't care if they get stained. I don't, that they just look well loved to me if they look like that. So once I had the stenciling in place, it was pretty easy. It was just a matter of going back and embellishing my page. Now in my hand there, I've actually got a selection of elements from this month's free printables so I've just got some little labels and tags and things like that and I chose all of these because they are in that same shade as that green pocket and tag there and I wanted to pull that color in a little bit more so I was just looking for some places to I actually used one of the little tabs to stick on the top of the tag and then I tied it with a little bit of baker's twine now, unfortunately, because I had stuck one of those little tabs on the top of the tag, I was unable to tie the twine the way I usually would on a tag. So I actually just tied it in a bit of a knot and left it in a loose sort of loop. So I'm just grabbing some of the word tags. I've got a little one that I stuck along the bottom of the photo there. Remember this. I've got a couple of little labels that I'm going to find some spots to tuck those in. Now, on that tag, it was sticking out of the pocket and it had a blank space there and I knew I wanted to put some sort of sticker or label or something and from that that sheet of Heidi Swap stickers, I actually found the one that said the story, which was perfect. It fit perfectly. Again, I didn't plan it. It's just one of those things that just happened to fall into place. So you can see that that sticks out there and that invites the viewer when they're looking at the page to then pull the tag out by the string and read the story that's on there. So yeah, tucking in a couple of those labels just to bring in some more of that green colour and just to give the layout a bit more of a cohesive look. And then I'm going in with some of the Pink Fresh Studio ephemera pieces. This is from the Floral Ephemera Pack and I love the variety of flowers and leaves that are in this pack. Now I'm actually just picking through there, looking for a few pieces with red on them. I was trying to pull in the red colour because obviously being a zombie, you can see that he's got blood on his face and he's got blood on his shirt. And I was also looking for the for the contrast and the, the highlighting pop of red. So I just picked through and found a few of the pieces that had some red or brown on them just to pull in some more of those warm tones into the page. So I again am creating three embellishment clusters to give my page balance. So you can see that I have popped in a piece at the top there above my photos. I've just popped a piece in there at the, on the left hand side of my photos and then I've gone to the bottom right corner to create my third cluster. And if you draw a line between those three clusters, you find that they create that visual triangle over the focal area of your page, which, as I mentioned in my previous video, is a surefire way to get balance onto your page. So once I've stuck, I just used Scotch Tacky Glue there in my fine line bottle to stick those ephemera pieces on and when I stick them on I only stick them under one edge and then I bend the other edges up away from the page just to give it a bit more dimension. I'm then coming in with the Heidi Swap um, old school the fray stickers there and just looking for a couple of different phrases in black to complement my page because once again I'm looking at pulling in that black 
into the page a little bit more because I don't want the few black things that I have there already sticking out. I'm just looking for something to make it a bit more cohesive. So yeah, tied in all of those black pieces and now I am I'm back on, I'm still on the, that Heidi Swap cardstock stickers there. I actually just grabbed one of the small labels and I stuck it down the bottom there. I have then grabbed the Pink Fresh Studio, the little puffy alphas, which I absolutely adore. I love the size of them. I love the feel of them. They're fabulous. And I am just going to put a very simple title on my page. I simply called this Frank because that was the name of his character, uh, all of the details of which are in the journaling. And I just used a mix of the colours there just to create the title. So once all of that was done, I did need one little bit to finish it off. I really did need some splatter on this page because I didn't like the fact that it essentially looked like a smaller page just stuck on a white background. And I just wanted something just to have the elements spilling across onto that white cardstock. So I just opted for some black ink and a small brush and just added some splatter near to where my embellishment clusters were because, again, that helps anchor them to the page. And other than that, that was it. This was a pretty straightforward page to do and one that I'm sure if you want to have a go at, it will be fairly easy to recreate. So thanks so much for stopping by today. I'll pop some close-ups on here. I hope you've enjoyed watching my process video. Please give me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Okay, bye.